Good morning, my YouTube viewers. It's Crystal here. I haven't made a video in several days, and the reason why is because I've been working on Flax CNN, which is a convolutional neural network. And basically, um, took me several days to figure out how to get it to work, but using a Kaggle data set. And because of that, I decided I was going to go ahead and make a video to show what I did. Now, if you look on the internet, you will find a lot of, not a lot, but several or some tutorials on flight CNNs. And what they do is they will use either a TensorFlow data set or a PyTorch data set. And then they will use a TensorFlow data loader or a PyTorch data loader. But what happens in that instance is um, you can't use it with a homemade data set because you've got this, you can't, because you've got a TensorFlow data loader and, or a Python or a PyTorch data loader. And um, the thing is, is what I wanted to be able to do was to actually use it with a homemade data set. And so I don't have a homemade data set. So I decided to use um, a Kaggle data set, you know, because that's what you want to do. You, When you're out in the world, you're not going to be using a TensorFlow data set or a PyTorch data set. You're going to be using your own personal homemade data set or a data set that's been given to you. So that's what I did. That's why you heard from me. And so now I'm making my video of what I did and it took me several days to solve this problem and if it, as I said if you go onto the internet and Google and do a search they do have tutorials on Flax CNNs but these tutorials on Flax CNNs um, they they're just with a high torture tensor flow and you're not going to be able to use that if you're going to go out into a job if you want to go out into a job you've got to be able to know how to use it without the PyTorch and tensor to flow data set and without the PyTorch and tensor flow data loader so now that i've said that what i will do is i will take a the link to the Jupyter Notebook and I will put it in the description box down below so you can look at the code and you can go along with me if you want to. So the first thing we do is we created this data set in Kaggle because I had to use a Kaggle, sorry we created this Jupyter Notebook in Kaggle because I had to use Kaggle's data set because I don't have any image data sets and I just have a little laptop and my little laptop is not that powerful. So that's why I have to use Kaggle. Another thing that I had to do is because I find Flax and Jax to be quite memory intensive. And so uh, what I had to do was I had to pare down the data set in order to get it to work without crashing. And I'll show you how I pared down the data set as well. But if you have a more powerful data set, more powerful laptop, then you won't have to do that. You won't need to do that. But I did it because my laptop is not very powerful. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the problem statement. And the problem statement is we're gonna identify whether an image is a horse or a human. So this is going to be a binary class, binary classification problem. We're going to import our library. So we're going to import NumPy as MP. So that creates NumPy arrays and it performs numeric computations. We're going to import Pandas as PD, which creates dead data frames and processes the data. We're going to import OS, which is going to go into the operating system and retrieve the uh, files that we're going to be using. We're going to import JAX, which is going to be used to um, create the neural network. From We're going to import 
flags, and flags is written on top of jacks. So if you're going to use flags, you have to import jacks as well. And so flags is a library that is used on top of jacks to create neural networks. Um, we're going to import objects, which is going to select our optimizer for the neural network that we have created in Flex. We're going to import sklearn, which provides machine learning functionality. We're going to import matplotlib.pyplotsplt, which visualizes the data. And we're going to import seaborn ssns. So after we've imported a lot of files, there's lots of files to use and strictly speaking what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to import all your libraries at the beginning of the program but some of the libraries I haven't imported at the beginning of the program which I should have but I didn't and that was because I was working so hard to solve this problem to be able to make a video you know so we're going to load the files. We're going to use OS to load the files. And we've got all our files. And so your files are PNG files. Those are picked. Those are um, pictures or images. And um, so you're either going to have a file of a horse or a human. And then it says you've got validation. You've got a validation set. And then, so the first one was humans, and then we're going to go into horses. And these are validation sets as well. Mm -hmm. So we just keep going. Some more humans. And I would just like to say that when I was working on this, you know, it was, you know, quite frustrating, you know, trying to find an answer, trying to find a solution because I'm just here on my own working. I don't have anybody to help me. And it was quite frustrating. And I just thought, well, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And that's basically what the situation is. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And then people some because I go to these places obviously because I'm a lot on a low income and I meet a lot of vulnerable people and I and they ask me what I do and I tell them they like like oh you're so smart you're so smart and I'm like no I'm not I'm not smart <laughs> if I was smart I would be able to do this without working days and days and days trying to solve a problem one thing that I am is persistent so I don't think I'm particularly smart, but I am persistent. And so, you know, there were several times when I thought of giving up, you know, we're just still going through all this. Yeah, there were several times when I thought of just giving up and working on something else, but I didn't. Even though I wanted to give up, I didn't. So now we're going in the train file. So we had our validation set, and now we've got our train sets. But it's all going to be either a horse or a human if I can get through all the images. Okay. Okay, so now what we've done is we've uploaded all of the images and you had a train set and a validation set and in the both of the sets you had either a horse or a human. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to import PathLab and that's going to create a directory. Data DIR equals the link for the, the images. Data DIR equals pathlab.path data DIR, and then you've got your data DIR. So there's your path, and it's 
Pox's path. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're um, we're setting up the um, we're setting up the um, the link for the horses and the humans. And one thing you'll notice right here, I had to shorten the data set because uh, I couldn't get it to work. It just kept crashing on me because I do think that Jacks and Flax use a lot of memory, and so. I just had 50 trained horses and 50 trained humans and 10 validation horses and 10 validation humans. Um, and that's what I did. And then so, so I had to shorten the data set to get it to work. But if you've got a real powerful computer, maybe you won't need to do that. So we're just using 50 and 10. Now what we have to do is we have to set up the images. So import matplotlib image as IMG. Import PL, uh, PIL dot image as IMG. And that does your image processing. And then so, um, and this is going to be to visualize the images. We're going to set up a random number for the trained horses and the trained humans. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to visualize the images. So you've got 38. Uh, we're going to break it into train and test. So you've got uh, 38 um, train images. And I believe that's going to be, it says 38 and 17. Let's see what we did here. just says 38 and 17 so you've got 38 horses and 17 humans I believe it should be the same for horses and humans it says print rend horses that's 38 and print rend humans and that's 17 So that's the number of horse and the number of humans. So we're printing a picture of it. And so you've got your horse and your human. And so you can see that a horse is a lot bigger than a human. So that's probably going to be how they're going to determine whether an image is a horse or a human. Because humans have different lengths and widths than horses. Okay, so now we're going to set our image path. So DF images equals train horses, train horses, train humans, train humans, val horses, val horses, val humans, val humans. And then we're going to set our labels. So train horses is zero and train humans is one and val horses is zero and val humans is one so now what we're going to do is we're going to check the shape of one of these images so we're going to import cv2 that's computer vision 2 img equals cv2 dot im read string df images train horses rand horses that's your random number and it's going to convert it to a numerical array. And the shape is going to be 300 by 300 by 3. The 3 indicates the color. So, and it's going to be RGB coloring, I believe. Now we're going to define our X and our Y values. X, Y equals 2 blank arrays for label images in DF images dot items. For image in images, img equals cv2 dot im read string image resized image equals cv2 dot resize image. And I said 224 by 224 is going to be the resize images. x dot append resize image, y dot append df labels dot label. And then print um, x and y. 
So you've got 120x and 120y. And so classes is going to be the number of classes in the y because y is your label. So it's going to be two because you've got two classes. One class is a horse and one another class is a human. Now we're going to convert the x and y variables to jacks arrays because the um, program won't work. The model won't work if you don't convert it to a jacks array. Then we're going to normalize x. I said normalize y, but it's normalize x. x equals x over 255. And that's just what they do in computer vision. But if you wanted to, you could normalize it by saying x equals x minus x min over x max minus x min. But generally in computer vision, they just say 255. But it would work if you wanted to use the normalization formula. So now what we're going to do is we're going to split it into training and validation sets. And so we set it up to have a validation, but I didn't use the validation in the um, program, but the validation set's there, and I didn't want to take it out of the program just in case I had a data set where I needed a validation. So x train x test val y train y test val equals train test split x y x train size equals 0 0.8 random state equals 42 x test x val y test y val equals train test split x test val y test val random state 42 and then x train shape and we check the shapes of those so you see that the X train is 96, 22, 220, 224, 224, 3. The X foul is 6, 224, 224, 3. The X test is 18, 224, 224, 3. And you've got your Y variables of 96, 6, and 18. So now we have to train x test y train x y test to numpy sorry jacks arrays you have to do that you have to convert them to jacks arrays i didn't use the validation set in this instance but i did leave the validation set in the code okay so x train x test y train y test are now jacks arrays so we're going to check the shape so you've still got the same shape that we had before, so that's good. Now we're going to define the model. So you're going to, from flex import linen, from Jax import random, which you didn't necessarily have to import the random. You could just say jax.random.prngk. Um, but anyway, it's that's the way it is in the code. And I was just whenever I was working on this code, trying to figure out the problem, figure out what the problem was, you know, um, you know, I was just, you know, I was on the verge of giving up, you know, so I just left the code in there. So we've got our class, class CNN is linen.module, def setup self, self.conv1, that's convolutional layer, one equals linen dot c o n v features equals thirty two kernel size equals three three padding is same name as c o n v one uh self dot c o n v two linen equals features sixteen kernel equals thirty three padding equals same name equals c o n v two um self e dot linear one equals linen dot dense classes that's two and name equals dense and then we do the call function x dot linen dot redo self dot c o n v inputs x dot linen dot redo self dot c o n v x x dot x reshape equals x dot shape common negative one x is self linear that's your activation function your activation function is going to be linear 
and then return linen dot soft max x and they don't they have a sigmoid um activation function but they don't use sigmoid activation functions in these flux cnns i mean you could modify it to put a sigmoid activation function in there and the way that you would change it would be that the features in the bottom would be one and um the um sigmoid would be the activation function but from what i've read they leave softmax in there and they just use it as a softmax so that's what i did so now we set our seed seed equals jacks dot random here in g key zero model equals c n params equals model dot init seed and then you're doing the first five rows of x train for layer params and params items print layer name format layer names weights biases layer params kernel layer params uh, bias and then you print whether it's a weights or a bias so you've got see on the layer one the layer two and then the layer three which is a dense layer and then so you've got preds equals model dot apply params x train five which is the first five rows of x train and you can see that this is the prediction for the first five rows of x train and what is going to happen is they're going to use the argmax function to select the um number that's highest so in that case the argmax function here is going to be zero here it's going to be one here it's going to be one here it's going to be zero and here it's going to be one so that's how they do it now we've got our cross entropy loss function which takes the weights the input data and the actual data preds equals model dot apply weights input data one hot actual equals jacks dot in in dot one hot so there you're gonna one hot encode the y variable or the y train variable and actual it says num class equals classes so that's going to be two log preds equals jnp preds return negative jnp dot sum one hot actual over times log preds so now we've got jax from jax import value and grad so that's a function in jax that you have to use def equals train and model and batches x y epochs weights optimizer state batch size equals 32 for i in range 1 to epochs plus 1 batches equals jmp dot arrange x dot shape 0 over batch size plus one loss is this a blank array for batch and batches if batch does not equal batch negative one start and int batch times batch size comma int batch times batch size plus batch size else start and int batch times batch size x batch y batch equals x start to the end y start to at the end loss gradients equals value and grad that's jack's uh, function cross entropy loss that's uh, the loss function weights comma x batch y batch and it says update weights updates optimizer state equals optimizer dot update gradients optimizer state weights equals optax dot apply updates weights and updates and then losses dot append loss and then you print the loss and then you return the weights so now we're going to actually run the program seed equals random dot png key zero batch size equals 64 epochs equals 15 learning rate equals jnp dot array 
1 over 1 e4. And it says model equals C and N. That's your convolution neural network. Weights equals model dot init bracket seeds. And it's the first five rows of the, um, it's the first five rows of the, of the train set. And then it says optimizer equals optax SGD. So optax is the library that gets to your um, optimizer. Learning rate equals learning rate. Optimizer state equals optimizer dot init weights. Final weights equals train model and batches x train y train. Epochs weights optimizer state branch state branch size. And then so what it does is it iterates, it trains the data into the model, and you can see that the loss is decreasing every epoch. So now what we do is we're going to make predictions. Def make predictions, weights, comma, input data, batch size equals 64. Branches equals JMP dot arrange input data dot shape over batch size plus one. Preds is a blank array for batch and batches. If batch does not equal batch minus one, start and um, batch times batch size, comma, int batch times batch size plus batch size. Else, start and int batch times batch size, comma, none, x batch equals input data, start end, if batch, if x batch dot shape does not equal zero, preds dot append model dot apply weights x batch, return preds. Okay, and now what it's doing is just testing the preds, test preds equals make prediction, final weights, x text, Batch size 64. Test preds equals JMP concatenate. Test preds squeeze. Uh, test preds equals JMP arc max. Test preds axis equals 1. So this arc max function is the function that selects the highest number in the two columns of data. And then we do train preds. Train preds is the same as test preds. So we do, we check test preds and train preds. So you've got your test preds and your train preds. And now what we do is we evaluate the model. We use SK Learns accuracy score. And then on train accuracy, you've got 89%. And on test accuracy, you only have 55%. We create a classification report with SKLEARN. So you can see a little bit more detail about the how the best fit of the model. And then we create a confusion matrix. So you'll see that we had seven zeros and four ones that should have been zero. And we have three ones and four zeros that should have been three, that should have been one. And so you can see that we didn't get a fantastic, this wasn't, you know, a fantastic score, but we got a score nonetheless. And the things that you can do to experiment to try to improve the score was set up the, I'll show you where we are. The, the, the number of features set up, in, which I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to try to improve the number of features and see if that improves the score. You never know, it might. You can also try a different optimizer. And you can change the number of batches. But one thing that I did do is when I had set up the batches for 32, it went into error. And I think that that's why I set up the batches as being 64. But you can change 
the number of batches. If I can find it here. Yeah, you can change the batch size. You can increase the epochs because the epochs are going to, um, if you have more epochs, you're going to have a more accurate score. And those are things that you can do to try to improve the score. And obviously, in this particular um, program, we only use like the first five. If we used all of them, it would have taken a really long time to train the data. But if you want to um, use more than the first five, you can take out that. You can take this out. I'll show you what to take out. Mm. Where it says train 0 to 5, that's the first five rows. You can take that out. And that will uh, train and make predictions on all of the data. But it will take a lot longer to do it. So there we go for this uh, video. It took me a long time to figure out what the problem was. So um, I'm passing that information on to you. And you can use this on a Kaggle data set or your own data set. You don't have to use um, a TensorFlow or a PyTorch data set. And you don't have to use a TensorFlow or a PyTorch data loader either. So that's the good thing about this model. And I think what I might do is I might increase the features myself and see if that improves my score. You never know. So thank you so much for watching my video. Thank you to my subscribers for supporting my channel. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. And I will communicate with you in the next video.